David and Peter Turnley, In Times of War and Peace. 230 pages. I think this was published in 97, a year after the original publication. It's by Abbeville Press Publishers. I might be wrong. I think this was the 97 version and that the first edition was 96 by a lector, I think, in Milan. It's 130 pages. It's a bit of a beast of a book. It's 11 and a half by 10, which if you put the A4 on it, it's that lovely, that beautiful sort of old school, horizontal style photo book, which I love. David and Peter are very renowned photographers. They have traveled the world from basic photography in the streets of Paris, to Chechnya, to Africa, to the Balkans, everywhere. They've sort of covered the war together. It's interesting and very strange and rather unique that they're two twin brothers. And that's a picture of them both on the back here. Nice guys. Um, what can I say? This, this book is about, I think it's in a, it's in a sort of retrospective of the work, I guess, 96, they're both very much alive. Is it a retrospective? Is it a way of them going, this is what we've done? It's a, a, a sort of, it, I guess it is a retrospective, isn't it? It's a sort of look back at some of the work they've done. Probably it's not that far from 96 when this was published, but a sort of recap on their careers so far, maybe that's a way I could look at it. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna let you have a look. I'm gonna run through it. I'm gonna show you some great pictures. On the inside cover, we've got like these visas. So again, it's just sort of saying, you know, we're well-traveled, this is what we do. And there's the photo visa applications. And uh, if you, you know, if you're a photographer and stuff, you're used to them. I've had a few of them from Moscow and other places myself. So I'm used to sort of standing in queues and waiting for visas to come through. And that's a sort of recognition of their broadness of travel. It's a nice touch, I think it's interesting. Why not? It's documentary, it's history, it's given some relevance to the pictures. Um, okay. Edited by Chiara Migliani and Gazzianeri, a very famous name. And this is just the information, the, um, with like the thank yous and stuff like that. The summary, the sort of chapters, and I think it's set in a way where if you look, it's a sort of intro here, and then you've got 17 is David Turney, 190 is Peter Turney, then captions, biographies, acknowledgements, and it's a sort of like essays and um, introductions. And Times of War and Peace by Howard Chapnick. So this is a nice little um, introduction, international encounters, and it's about a guardian is, is in meeting with the brothers, um, David and Peter Turney, at, the Scavius Gallagheri, which is a case of open public, the Scavius Gallagheri, one of the some sort archaeological site. So this is about his meeting. And this is David and Peter Turney at the Scavius Gallagheri by Giovanni Luca Darby. And that's like a page. And then we've got the catalogue. And now we're going into the work. But if we go right to the end, and I forgot the dust jacket, it's a nice dust jacket, and then a nice sort of good quality finish cover, textured cover, and we've got the, and we've got the biographies, we've got a, a lot of um, information about the boys and the acknowledgements, a lot of acknowledgements, because I guess if you look back at their work, you've got to sort of thank everybody because you can't be going to say there, which I don't know where it is because there's no, oh yes it is, it's Czechoslovakia, and that's in 1989, so that was Czechoslovakia then. You've got fixers involved, you've got people involved, You've got who you went out for. So there's a massive thank you list. And so I guess that's why the acknowledgement is quite expansive. There's a lot of work to get that together. You can't forget people. So that's the biographies. And here, which I like, which I really think is a lovely addition to the book, and I'm really pleased it's in here, is this captions. It's lovely. So you have a brief insight here on there. So you've got Beijing, 1989. And then you've got the captions, which you can relate to. So it's, it's, it's a great touch, and I love the fact that it's got that. And that's how photography books should be. They should, you've should got to have some text. You've got to have some, you've got to have some insight into the, into the pictures. Yes, people can make their own minds up, and that's what it's about as well. I get that. But it's nice to have some reference and, and all that work, and you put your pictures in, and there's nothing for somebody 
who knows nothing about what you're photographing to have learned something extra. And I, I think that, that's really important, especially a book on this scale and because it's a historical document in a way. So let's get back on here. Let's start with David. OK, so pictures on both sides. What I'm going to do is I'm going to focus down and I'm going to focus on the right side. Now, if anything comes of on the left, which I think is brilliant, I'm going to move it over and give you an insight. But effectively, this book is easily accessible. It's really available. You can get it on Amazon. You can probably get it off David and Peter if you if you email them and, and ask them to sign it, blah, blah, blah. I'm sure, I'm sure they would oblige. So here we go. So in Paris, France, so David has a, an association with France. I think he's based there. I can't speak for Peter. I'm not really sure if Peter's based there, but I know David's been documenting um, Paris for 30 years, so I'd be interested to find something on that and have a look at that. So this is Hollow Creek in West Virginia. It's nice, isn't it? Beirut, Lebanon, 1982. Delhi, to Indian refugee camp. Some really good stuff. You know, in 1990, you can see, I'm 99% sure this is film. You can just see a beauty in the film. You can see it, I, I hope I'm right. It's beautiful. It's amazing too, the, the, the viewfinder. This is a gold miner and his wife in the village of Chansky. I think that's how you pronounce it. He's on his home leave from the gold mines. Look at the marks in his face. Look at the marks. I wonder if they're like a religious thing. Amazing. I think I get some of them all down on this. Great stuff. Beautiful photographs. Again, the contrast to South Africa. That is such a powerful image. Orange Free State, South Africa. John Richter, Orange Free State farmer, makes a telephone call in his bedroom while a 14 year old domestic servant brushes the carpet. He's turned that into something totally different, hasn't he? Look at the. Look at the the connotations in that shot, it's incredible. They're really powerful. It meant nothing to him when he was photographing it, but he knew what he was doing when he took that shot, very powerful. Even here, he's almost ludicrous, you know, almost making fun of the white guy, or the white schoolboy in that sort of institutionalised dress. Almost making him look odd, whereas it's, it's you know, he's trying to view, in another way, it's, the white is viewing that, that, that sort of the black side is odd. It's quite a lovely, lovely juxtaposition and change there. Gorgeous. Look at that. Oh man, this is gorgeous. Beautiful control of light. Very difficult if this is Tranny E6. If this is E6, it's beautiful execution of, of E6. I presume 87, it's, it's, it's E6. Let's see. The figures coming through here. This is uh, an Orange Free State farm, uh, a, a borer who was killed by in an accident. Cape Town. That Winnie Mandela, pierced through the bars, who surrounded a home. Voting. Look at that. Wow, look at this shot. Right in the thick of it. And that's sweat all. This is Armenia, nineteen eighty eight. It's in uh, Lena Khan, toast vodka to the deaths of family and friends. It's interesting how he's covering a lot of sort of deaths and rituals, isn't he? And, and cutting edge stuff, you know, people who were under, under duress in a sense and under, in, a, in, a, in a situation. Here's something from Belfast, which... Incredible access. Takes some balls to go and do this stuff. You know, Peter, 
and David make it look so easy. And it does take some goal and some and bravery to go and put yourself in these positions. Yeah, you, you know, you can be quite privileged as a photographer and you do get escorted around, but a lot of the time with stuff like this, once you lose that, the safety of hotels and the safety of your cars and your, your, your fixers and your drivers, you're on your own because you've got to come up with the goods. This is Prague, Czechoslovakia, 1989. This is when everybody was coming out of the streets wanting independence from Russia. Look at this. This is quite beautiful. Look at that. Beautiful. Just pictures which were made to look so simple, man. Look at that. Fantastic. This is Tiananmen Square. Massive, massive. Um, historical event, and then Saudi Arabia. And I guess this is just a book, you know, of um, of the, the, some of the, the hostilities they covered, some of the the turmoil they covered into people's lives, looking at um, everyday things in places of conflict and making trying to make some sense of it all, you know. in Moscow. I'm missing a lot out. Oh, I'm not going to miss this out. Look at that. How gorgeous is that? It's almost like... It's 1989, and that, again, has got to be filmed. I'll keep going on about it, but I could just sense E6 on this. It's so beautiful, that picture. How stunning is that? You need to get this book. It's so gorgeous. There's a, they've done a lot of books out, these two guys, you know, and I think you could pick them up. You can pick them up very easily on Amazon and through the boys of different websites. And they are twin brothers, you know, they've got different they've got different styles, they've got different ways of doing stuff, but they they're very prolific in this area of photojournalism and I like that. And it's interesting that you can see through the work some of the difference. And we'll look we'll move on to Peter in a minute and have a look at his work. I'm missing a lot out. So Going back to that, that is Moscow 91. That is um, an attempt in Russian coup. The Soviet soldiers and attacks who defeated a protest against Boris Yeltsin. Um, defect. That was after the defection, the troops and the coup. Remember that. That's Somalia 92. There's some graphic images on the other side. I won't go into that. Oh, look at that. This is Gorma. These are alive. These are just young kids. Let's find out, what's this about? This is, they were found in orphans left after their parents died from cholera inside there. Uh, isn't that, that's just so heartbreaking. I wonder where these boys and girls are now. God, life's so cruel. Such a beautiful way of capturing it though. We can tell where this is, we covered this with, as you put us, Rwanda. Look at this. That's horrific. German Czech border, 94. Really poignant times these boys were documenting this. Really interesting times. Look at this contrast. How about that for a shot? You can't make this stuff up, can you? This looks like Haiti. So there's a lot of pictures here, which I didn't want to look at from Chechnya, very gruesome, very, very, uh, subject matter is death, and it's not pretty. It's beautiful to look at, but it's not pretty. And I didn't want to show them. Baku, Azerbaijan, 1995. This is um, above most important oil reserves in the world. Hebron, 1995. Obviously the troubles in the West Bank. And Serbsko and Bosnia, 95. And that's in Bosnia, 95. And in the summer of 95, thousands of Muslims were driven by Serbs from their homes and enclaves of Srebrenica and Zipa. And this is God, the granddad with his two granddaughters, grandchildren. 
This is the f fleeing of the Muslims from the Serbs. This is 95. Mostar. This is the cover. And this is Bosnia 95. And then we're back to the Kalahari, or back to Africa. And now we're in Paris. And now we're on to Peter. Okay. So both the same age, twin brothers. Let's see how he approaches photography differently. Or the same, or, or whatever. This actually looks really old. This is 1973, Fort Wayne, Indiana. I think from this series, it looks like it could be a little bit about segregation and, and black Americans. That's a migrant child, I think, in um, Death Valley. Yeah. I guess this could be about... Is this about migrant workers and stuff? It could be. So this is... Um, yeah, this is... Well, this is about people living on the fringes, isn't it? It's about people selling their livelihoods and possessions and their bodies and working for, for zero to survive. Nice. New Delhi, India. Beautiful, a very atmospheric. West Bank as well. A lot sharp, not sharper, but a lot more, a lot of different, it's almost like a different film. David is quite, is very poetic in his colours, isn't he? He's very, almost sort of like cinematic and these ones are a little bit more um, real in a sense. They're, they're, they're much more they're, they're defining in their colours and they're not defined. And these are much more real in a way and, and, and make more realistic. They almost feel like they were shot yesterday, whereas I think David, some of David's stuff was, was quite almost cinematic in a way, it was very, in fact, a little bit surreal, the way he shot it with his colours and maybe his choice of film. Look at that, oh, gorgeous. This is Sisters More on the Death of Their Brother in Palestine. Bucharest, Romania. I guess 90 was the time of the of the revolution, wasn't it? Romania factory worker. We've got some other stuff from Armenia and Beijing on the left. I'm missing a lot out. One page 145. So you can imagine how much photography's in there. You've seen a quarter of it at the minute. You haven't even seen even that, the fifth of it maybe. This is Beijing. There's a bit of build up to Yellowman Square, I presume, 1989, China. The morning of the massacre, yeah, the morning after the massacre. Ah, look at this, let's pull over. We can get some time, like, compare some of the shots they both done there at this time, because they were both obviously there. It looks like Berlin. So they're following the same route, aren't they? They're going to the same place. It's stunning. I think these, that should be a double page. That should be like big. I don't know why they put this little tiny shots. I get, I'd have rather seen that on one left side and that on the right side. It's big shots. It's been a little bit too... Um, this is Germany, Moscow, and a little bit too... Um, it's trying to tell a different story here. Now, I'm not bothered who that is, I'm more interested in the dynamics of the shot and I would have liked to have seen them big, the other ones, because they're beautiful. This is, I mean, I'm not saying I'm not bothered who that is. That's quite an um, important sort of gathering for um, the fall of the Soviet Union. I presume that's, we're not looking at the captions, that's uh, the, the president or the prime minister. Bucharest, Romania, 89. Moscow. That's a great shot. 
Uzbekistan, 87. Malawi, 88. Great shot. Beautiful. So simple. Somalia, 86. This looks like a refugee camp. Yeah, Eritrean refugee camp. Is that surreal? Refugee camp 94. We've got Soweto on the left, Mostar, sorry, Mostar, Bosnia on the left, and Croatia. Some really lovely pictures. Look, the pictures on here look like they're from, quick look, look like they're from sort of the 1960s. Amazing, it's the 90s. Four and um, got Mandela. Interesting shot. This is um, Transkei or Transki in South Africa, 1994. This is the Man Nelson Mandela vault. This is when they're all uh, South Africans are voting for Nelson Mandela. This is the queues. Bucharest, 1990. Tory Island, Ireland. Gallic fishermen, beautiful. Moscow, 93. So it's a really interesting picture here. I'm gonna just move this over because there's a bit of a gruesome picture on the right from, um, from Kuwait. But this picture here, it's weird. It just looks like a fashion shoot with a price food on fire in the background. It's, a, it's, it's an amazing shot. And it's the day after um, the police beat Rodney King and after they were acquitted and Central South or whatever it is, Central Los Angeles burns, it says. Interesting. The other picture on the other side was pretty gruesome. And that is Somalia. It's a heavy book, this. I'm finding it hard to keep it contained. That's Somalia. There's some pretty gruesome stuff I don't want to look at. And that is Port au Prince, 1894. This is a funeral service. Do, these boys cover a lot of funerals. Maybe there's something about them they want to. Are they important funerals? But they, they deal with a lot of death, these guys. There's a picture I want to show you. There's some really gruesome stuff in there, so I want to avoid it and I want to show you this crazy picture. And just to finish off with some lovely shots in Paris, that's beautiful, isn't it? That's 1976. Cafe Culture. Cafe Culture. They're definitely both subtle in certain ways, but they're definitely quite hard hitting in other ways. They, they have a similar style, but you can tell a little bit who shot what. I'm not an expert, I'm just saying, this is my view, I've just looked at it. I like this, it's a lovely book. Get it and get it, you can get it on Amazon. It's worth having a look. I showed you a fraction of the book. It might have felt that I've shown you a lot. I could have talked on this book for ages, but go and look at it yourself, buy it, cost you a tenner. Go and buy it, have it in your collection. Let's have a look at some other books later from David and Peter. But for now, in times of war and peace, David and Peter Turnley, thank you very much.